Hello. Look at that big smile, Gabrielle. Hello, hello. And Glenda. <laughs> I like that. How are you doing, guys? I'm great. How are you doing? Thank you. Everything How good? How are you? I'm all right. Some of you. Good, thank happy. you. That's awesome. Are you happy to be in class? Yeah, yeah of cool. course. I'm really happy. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yes, I am. Great. I'm glad to hear that. No, and you know what? Remaining optimistic despite all the difficulties the country is going through, that speaks well about you. You have such a big smile and the country is falling into pieces. <laughs> and you have a big smile. You're willing to learn to be better. I, I admire that. It's great great people all right um let's begin hold on i have a lot of stuff opened but here's yours this is about where you say we're gonna work on the platform okay let's begin with that no, mm -hmm. I'm sorry um, I see some of you have been commenting on the section where you were talking about friends, teachers, all of that. Let's move the microphone, please. It's kind of, kind of loud. So if you're working on the platform outside of the classroom, well, outside of class, I would recommend you to leave comments so you can get extra practice. It's not required and it's not really evaluated, but it's good for you. Okay. So this is where we left off. We were supposed to answer the questions about this. And then let me get there. Are you guys on the platform right now? Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Great. And that's job based on personality type. So there is a national forecast tonight. Right, and not a forecast, a national broadcast tonight, a presidential one, right? I think yes. the really start at 845. Uh, so watch it. Right, great. But don't get too excited. I don't think you're getting out of quarantine yet. Hmm. So get your hopes up. <laughs> Need to stay realistic. And here in Argentina, we are still in quarantine till the seventh. So three more days, and then we're waiting to see what's going to happen. But we have been in quarantine for as long as you have. So we've been the same days during this quarantine. We have it's been the same same number of days. All right. Let's start with section two. Finally, uh, Cindy, could you read the objective, please? Okay, teacher. The, by the end of this class, you will learn about the best jobs based on personality types. Based on personality Base. types. Uh -huh, type. Very good. Career moves. Let's watch this. All right, get your notebooks ready, ready to take notes because it's a long video, so I would like you to be engaged. Okay. Welcome to Matheson College. I'm Jamie Fitch. Some students arrive on campus with clear career ambitions, but most students need some help figuring out which field of study is right for them. The good news is, help is available. I'm here with Jacqueline Auden, a career advisor from the Career Services Department here on campus. Ms. Auden, you've advised a lot of students over the years about choosing a major and a career path. What should students consider? Well, Jamie, one of the first things to consider is your personality type. Well, along with your skills, abilities, and personal preferences, your personality type can guide you toward finding a major that best suits you. Okay. So how many personality types are there? Uh, there are six basic personality types. Hmm. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. 
Now, the first type is artistic. These people are creative and imaginative, and they prefer to work on one project at a time rather than multitasking. What careers should artistic types pursue? The most important thing for this type of people is being in charge of a creative project. So careers to consider are landscaping, graphic design, web design. I see. The next personality type is conventional. Tell us about that one. Yes, conventional types are practical and orderly. They respond well to rules, procedures, schedules, things like that. Hmm. What types of careers do conventional type people usually enjoy? Conventional types often enjoy numbers, and they're also good with measuring and analyzing things in general. So, often they tend to be bankers, lawyers, building inspectors, and technical writers. Are they good business people? Sure, they can be. But they usually work for others. The next type, enterprising people, those are the business owners. Ah, the enterprising type. What characteristics do those people share? They tend to be leaders. They're independent and willing to take risks. They're good at motivating people, so we often find them in sales. Really? Hmm. What careers do they enjoy, aside from sales? Well, they're good at directing projects and people, so they make good managers. Okay, so that's three types. Let's take a look at the fourth type, investigative. Well, this type of person prefers logic to imagination and tends to be precise and detailed. So, Jamie, what are some careers that you think would suit this type of person? Hmm. Science would probably be appealing. You're right. Uncovering mysteries is key to any type of science, but librarians are also the investigative type. Really, any career that involves research fits into this category. Hmm. So that brings us up to the fifth type, realistic. Yes, realistic types like to work with their hands, with tools. They want to see the results of their work in physical terms. Hmm. That sounds like repair people to me. Yes, that's right. Also jewelry makers, builders, and engineers. So now for the sixth personality type, which is the one that describes me best. Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> the last type is social. Social types like people. Their jobs usually involve helping and communicating with others. Oh, but teaching would appeal to social types. Oh, yes. Medicine, coaching, broadcast journalism, and, of course, career advising. That's us, social types. Ms. Auden, thank you for sharing this information with us. It was my pleasure, Jamie. Well, we hope this information has been helpful to you. If you'd like to learn more, visit the Career Services Department and tell them Jamie sent you. Hey, that would be too old now, so don't say anything. <laughs> Two years ago. Okay, so did you take notes about uh, all the types? They are six, right? Yeah. You took notes? Yes, um, I did. I did. Okay, well, I would suggest we watch it one more time. So what are the six types, first of all? What is first, type number one? Artistic. 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 I think we're good too. Conventional. Conventional. Yes. Enterprising. 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 Investigative. Investigative. Realistic. Realistic. And social. And social. And social. And social. That's very good. So do you have details on how you describe these people and what is suitable for each one of them? Yes, or, a bit. <laughs> or would you like to watch it one more time to get more details? All right, let's take note of this and I would like you to write the description of each one of them and also the, um, the job that is suitable for each one. A suitable job, okay. So I need you to have notes because we're going to discuss right after watching the video. Okay, so take uh, write down as many details as you can. We're going to watch again. Use the microphone, please. And pay attention.
Welcome to Matheson College. I'm Jamie Fitch. Some students arrive on campus with clear career ambitions, but most students need some help figuring out which field of study is right for them. The good news is, help is available. I'm here with Jacqueline Auden, a career advisor from the Career Services Department here on campus. Ms. Auden, you've advised a lot of students over the years about choosing a major and a career path. What should students consider? Well, Jamie, one of the first things to consider is your personality type. Well, along with your skills, abilities, and personal preferences, your personality type can guide you toward finding a major that best suits you. Okay. So how many personality types are there? Uh, there are six basic personality types. Hmm. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Now, the first type is artistic. These people are creative and imaginative, and they prefer to work on one project at a time rather than multitasking. What careers should artistic types pursue? The most important thing for this type of people is being in charge of a creative project. So careers to consider are landscaping, graphic design, web design. I see. The next personality type is conventional. Tell us about that one. Yes, conventional types are practical and orderly. They respond well to rules, procedures, schedules, things like that. Hmm. What types of careers do conventional type people usually enjoy? Conventional types often enjoy numbers, and they're also good with measuring and analyzing things in general. So often they tend to be bankers, lawyers, building inspectors, and technical writers. Are they good business people? Sure, they can be. But they usually work for others. The next type, enterprising people, those are the business owners. Ah, the enterprising type. What characteristics do those people share? They tend to be leaders. They're independent and willing to take risks. They're good at motivating people, so we often find them in sales. Really? Hmm. What careers do they enjoy, aside from sales? Well, they're good at directing projects and people. So they make good managers. Okay, so that's three types. Let's take a look at the fourth type, investigative. Well, this type of person prefers logic to imagination and tends to be precise and detailed. So Jamie, what are some careers that you think would suit this type of person? Hmm. Science would probably be appealing. You're right. Uncovering mysteries is key to any type of science. But librarians are also the investigative type. Really, any career that involves research fits into this category. Hmm. So that brings us up to the fifth type, realistic. Yes, realistic types like to work with their hands, with tools. They want to see the results of their work in physical terms. Hmm. That sounds like repair people to me. Yes, that's right. Also jewelry makers, builders, and engineers. So now for the sixth personality type, which is the one that describes me best. Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> the last type is social. Social types like people. Their jobs usually involve helping and communicating with others. Oh, but teaching would appeal to social types. Oh, yes. Medicine, coaching, broadcast journalism, and, of course, career advising. That's us, social types. Ms. Auden? Thank you for sharing this information with us. It was my pleasure, Jamie. Well, we hope this information has been helpful to you. If you'd like to learn more, visit the Career Services Department and tell them Jamie sent you. Okay, so I guess the second time you got more details. Yes? Yes, teacher. Yes, yes, uh, of course. Yes. Awesome. Um, do me a favor, please, and everybody turn your cameras on because I see a lot of people have it off. The thing is, we're going to be in groups right now, and it's really uncomfortable for your classmates to be talking to. I don't know if it's happened to you already, but you would agree with me that it's really uncomfortable to talk to a bland, black screen, isn't it? Because it feels weird. It is. Yeah, it is. yeah kind of weird. 
it's weird, right? Because you're like, well, I see yes, myself and I don't see anybody here. And on top of that, I don't know if people are cooking right now, right? They're <laughs> doing something else or they're in class. So that's why it is necessary for you to turn it on, please, because it makes the whole thing better. So what we're going to do right now is you're going to describe it in small groups of three because I want you to use the vocabulary you just put together. All right, then uh, say what suitable job or what job fits each personality type. And finally, uh, tell your classmate what personality you think you are, okay, your personality type. So we're going to do three things, right? First, describe them. Second, uh, talk about the suitable job for that person. Uh, third, talk about your personality, the one you think it is. And four, uh, tell your classmates what job you're doing right now and which one would have been better or if the one you're working on right now is the, good, is the best one for you or if there could have been another one that would have been more suitable. Was that clear? So let's carry out this discussion, okay? These four things we're going to do right now. Ready? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Let's do that. So we'll work in groups of three. So the invitation, please. And everybody turn your cameras on, please, please. Here we go. Let's practice. Accept the invitation, please. Click on accept. my actual job and uh, if it's good for me if it's suitable for me uh, so i don't know if you want to begin but gerardo first okay. you can describe them right describe each yes. person. okay great okay describe gerardo first. if you want uh... <laughs> yeah sure. of course of course uh the type of personality that we are just studying is our is traditional, executive, um, enterprise, realistic, and social. Um, well, I can talk about, I don't know, conventional. The conventional people is um, someone who is practical, um, who likes to work with numbers and analyze um, numbers. <laughs> so another question that, um, that the suitable job is, I don't know, they have very, I don't know how to say it. They're like a native creative. They, when they, they yes, like to say something, they have patience. They have patience yes. when they're doing something. Correct. Okay. Innate. Cre ah, innate. Yes, instead of native, innate. Okay, native. No, innate. <laughs> innate. Yeah. Okay. They are innate creators. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Good vocabulary. I like it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. let's talk about the other personality type. It's enter enterprising. It's, uh, they are regular business owners. They are independent and risk-taking. And the uh, careers that, that they are switchable are business suitable? and management. Suitable? No, suitable. 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 All right, suitable. Uh, and uh, risk-taker. Risk-taker. Taker. Okay, yeah, thank you. Risk takers yeah. risk takers okay mm -hmm. take it all jobs will be like manager um i don't remember the other one that she mentioned coaching, but coach. that's what i wrote coaching yes like coach um and something related like manage um 
maybe a group of people. So management. That's, yeah, management. Yeah, management. Yeah, they are business owner. Yeah, business. <laughs> business, business owner. Business owner, that's the, the word business owner. Yeah, what about investigative, Carlos? Okay, investigating, I wrote down, uh, they are logic. Uh, they have a very good, they pay attention into details. Uh, they can work in science, um, something, uh, everything related to research. And like, like, motivate people. And they are good at directing projects and people. Yeah and are good managers. Yeah. So the next is... What type are we describing? Uh, enterprise. Right now, enterprise. Oh, okay. Now, investigative. Investigative. How do you say that? <laughs> Investi <laughs> investigative. <laughs> Sorry? Investigative. Investigative. In Investigative. 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 Perfect. Investigative. Okay. Investigative. Are science people and Logical. are in career advising. Okay. Well, about what about I your think, personality type? Uh, about my personality type. Uh, maybe I don't suitable in just one uh, because I think some of them are only one in a specific. No, we, we we can have two or three, not necessarily just one. This is this is a mistake. We can have them all. Uh huh. Yes. I don't think you can have all of them. <laughs> maybe two or three. Nah, I'm no. No. <laughs> no, but 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 it's true, teacher. We don't have just one personality. Yes, I worry. I received some tests. No, for your personality, it's not your job. It's for your personality. Yeah, maybe a combination of two of them. The thing is that there is one of them at which you score higher than the rest of them, so that's the one that describes you the most. Even if you have a little bit of everyone. How do you say predominante? A, a dominant one or dominant or you have a oh there's another word a, the, there's the i think prevailing one or pre yeah they, they are for dominant mm -hmm. stable and creative and i don't remember which is the other oh you received the test mm. that you said from work yes i have received the test like two times per year and they always are like watching how we are <laughs> mm -hmm. and there is other that is a comparison with natural features like ground wind water and fire i think mm. yeah, yeah, all those tests. so yes yeah, so, sorry karen i, I said um, prevailing right that is one what? you can also say predominant dominant uh -huh. predominant you can say predominant okay. prevailing there's another word, but I don't know. That word. And mm -hmm. so, what personality type are you, or what do you think you are? For me, I think I'm a artistic, artistic. Um, conventional, and social. <laughs> you had three. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, because and I, um, I consider I have two options. It's like um, because I have two careers, and I consider like artistic, like a half and a half, artistic and social. And uh, I don't know, maybe because I like to to work with um, a system like a. Comp like a technician uh, or um, system computer system and also I like to teach in that way so I consider like a half and a half artistic and and social but maybe I had a, the, my my balance is 
like uh, in order to go to uh, social yeah because i know I, I like to teach others i like to give my opinions and try to uh, try to teach uh, ideas or knowledge or something like that in that way i like it raul when you say your balance yeah. goes to social are you trying to say that is your predominant trait is social yeah i consider it like the way okay thank you teacher yeah it's predominance in that way mm -hmm. and the last the last uh, the last one we had to discuss about what you consider the no what is your job about right now if you are working sorry uh, guys, one second. or what are you doing sorry has everyone described your personality and the job you're doing yeah you're the last yeah one. we did yeah you're the last one we already did the last one is what job you're you're doing or what would you like to to do you're almost done okay. Yeah, we are discussing. Uh, do you work, Gabriel? Yes, How are you, Gabriel. Currently. He looks very young, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I was wondering. Yeah. Embarrassed. <laughs> How old are you? Me? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm 19. And ah, 19 years old. Oh, come on. Oh, I, feel so. I feel really old. <laughs> How old are you, Karina? <laughs> and I am 30. 30? Oh, you look young. Glenda? I'm 29. 29? You girls look younger than I. I'm 28. I look like 30 something. <laughs> they look very young. <laughs> Yes, you look very young. No, no, no. Okay, you're... I am the older. <laughs> you're the oldest? <laughs> you're the boss. The oldest, yeah. <laughs> no, but Gabrielle, you seriously, you look like 16 years old or so. <laughs> <laughs> like, is, he even, is he underage? No, no. <laughs> or what? I was wondering. <laughs> no. I have, I, I have my duty. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> you have a job. Yeah. And, and what do oh. you do? Are you just studying? Right what? Now? I finish it and I study in English, English teaching. But until this moment, I haven't worked. In my case, I finished uh, in 2015 my career in the university. After oh, that, sorry, your major. This career is related with work and major is about education. And which is the difference between career and profession? Your profession is what you do and your career is the background or the the time you have spent doing that building your career your experience for example my major is uh, administration uh -huh. my profession is on sales probably management you would call that not administration but management management mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. your your career is what is your your profession uh, i work in sales and my job is that's the thing who i don't really understand my major like you said is management, uh, management. Mm -hmm. okay my profession is on sales i i work in sales okay your profession um, is a sales person you're a sales person and you yeah. have a career uh, as a sales person or a career in sales in sales and which is the difference between um career okay my career so is in sales yeah my profession uh, in which is the difference between profession and my job title for example uh, your job title is for example i my profession okay. is i'm a teacher right but depending on what company i work for here i'm um I'm a facilitator, that's my job title, all right? In the other company, I'm a 
a teacher. And in other places, okay. they call me a coach. So the title is decided by the company. But my profession is a teacher. Teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's the difference. Are you almost done? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Hola. Yes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No Boys and everything. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Yes, thank you. What an interesting discussion. I know it's about work and everything, but for me, it was amusing. I found it amusing, even though I didn't participate. But tell me, guys, um, we cannot make it that long in this big group, so just tell me the personality type that is prevailing for you. Only one, okay? Just tell me one, everyone. Conventional. Enterprising. Enterprising. Social. Conventional. Social. Social. Who is social? Raise your hand. Whoever is social, well, I'm gonna say it like that because I can. I, I want to kind of get to know you. So, who is artistic? Artistic. Celia. Yeah. And Raúl. Okay. Are you working in something related to your personality? No. Yeah. In my case, I'm working in that way. I think so. What do you do, Raúl? Well, uh, um, I'm a teacher computer and also I am a web designer. So oh, okay. in that no, way, that's why I'm a little bit artistic. <laughs> okay, very good. Who is conventional? Fatima, Juan, Wilbur. Fatima, I would have thought you are. Marcela, are you conventional, really? <laughs> I'm conventional. Misael, you look like yeah. that, that type. Ah, uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the type of people who like routine and they, they like structured things. You kind of look like that. Okay, are you working in something related with that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, okay. I am. Software, software software development. Yeah. Marcela, what do you do? I am I'm working with um I am a viable analyst. I work with accountant, content viables. Okay, very good. I didn't know that. Okay, enterprising. Who is like this? Carlos, Gerardo, uh -huh. Oh, just the two of you. Look, guys. <laughs> All right, uh, Carlos, what do you do? Well, in my case, uh, I work in a company related to cybersecurity, and I have the I am the project manager. Okay, yeah, that's some sort of enterprising. Have you thought about? becoming an entrepreneur uh, no because uh, the company is from united states mm -hmm. uh, we are partners from latin america okay gerardo oh you told okay. me you're a salesperson right oh do you yeah. remember a salesperson for these type of <laughs> people that's right right there gerardo awesome okay yes. investigative <gasps> Investigative. Nobody. Misael. Yes. Okay. Great. But this is very low. That's why we don't have scientists in El Salvador almost. <laughs> we don't <laughs> like that. Yeah. All right. What about realistic? But like reality, yeah. kinesthetic people. Nobody? Ah, oh, Francisco, you want to raise your hand every time I say something? No, <laughs> that doesn't work like that. No, no this kidding. is the second time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, social or sociable. Glenda. <laughs> Who else? Raul, Inmar. Okay, Inmar, what do you do? Oh, Carlos, what do you guys do? I can tell you're sociable, you know, because you're always smiling, and that tells me something. All right, Ian, Mark, Carlos, and Glenda, what do you do? Well, me first. Me? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, In ladies there. first. Uh -huh. Yeah, Glenda. Okay. Thank you. Well, I was working a few years as a Spanish teacher, 
and now I work as a flight attendant and all the time I need to talk with different kind of people and different oh, situations that and that's why I'm, I'm always smiling. <laughs> okay, now I know why. Great, <laughs> yeah. good, good. In what? Well, uh, I work in a administration department. I had to contact with a lot of uh, students. I work at Eat Cafe Padre, and I had to 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 help the old student have um, the material, the the um, document. You you want to make sure everything is in order, that they're on track. Okay. And yeah. then someone else, right? Oh, Carlos. Carlos. Yeah. And so right now I don't have a job, but I would like to be a teacher English in the future. And this year I was going to start mm -hmm. my career, but you know, the coronavirus rained mm -hmm. my pants, so I would like to start the next year. Okay, and you say, by the way, computer yeah. teacher and English teacher, the other way around, all right? The word that describes it goes first. But yeah, great. Well, that's a good path. You can follow that. All right, that was interesting. Very good. Now, we're going to change topic. Let's go to section 2.2. And let me see who's going to read. Gabrielle. Gabrielle is our youngest classmate. Well, your youngest classmate. My youngest student okay. at the time. No, not really. Uh -huh. I have a nine-year-old student, so no, never mind, Gabriel. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's 19 years old. <laughs> so young. All right, Gabriel, read the objective, please. <laughs> okay. Okay. By the end of this class, participants will learn how to use gerund. Yeah. Gerund no. phrases? Gerund phrases as subjects and objects. Very good. All right, let's watch. Notebooks ready. Okay, let's take notes. If you noticed, the um, last video was very effective because you took notes. It was very effective. You got a lot of vocabulary and everything. Welcome to this class. In this class, what we want to do is we want to practice gerund phrases. And so we're going to learn how gerunds are used as subjects and also how they're used as objects. And uh, you might have seen and you might be a little bit confused about this whole deal here. So for example, whenever you see, uh, like at hotels, you see no smoking, uh, no parking, all that. You might think that that is wrong, but actually it's not. And then we're going to try to make sense of all of that here. Um, and then, so let me give you an example on how this is useful. So we're going to talk a little bit about politics uh, a little bit, uh, not going into details, of course, but just some general things about it. Uh, so running for office. Well, look at a couple of sentences here and then uh, just uh, see some common things that politicians say whenever they're running for office. Well, the, the first thing is voting is an important responsibility. Um, improving our schools, fighting for a new hospital, etc. So let me quickly outline that this is a gerund. So a gerund is simply a verb which uh, you um, add ing to, all right? And then, uh, of course, there's some spelling things about it that you might have learned in previous classes. But here are some examples on how gerunds are, are used either as subjects of sentences. So for example, voting is an important responsibility. Voting is the subject of our sentence. So it's not acting as a verb. Let's discuss improving our school. So as you can see there, we're using that as an object. And so let's try to make sense of all of this. A couple of more examples. Choosing a candidate takes time. And um, let me point out um, the gerunds here. So choosing a candidate, that's, that's the subject of our sentence. I enjoy working for the people. Okay, that's uh, working. In that case, it's not acting as a verb. It's acting as the object of our sentence. Uh, do you resent paying higher taxes? Again, pain is not the verb. It's, is, is the gerund that is being used um, as, a, as an object there. So now that I gave a few examples on how gerunds are used as subjects and how they're used as objects, I would like to go into details now and talk a little bit about 
the usage of gerunds. And the first thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, in this case, in this lesson, we're using gerunds as nouns. So we're using them as people, places, or things. And so we're familiar with the verb work, for example. And if we include ing, then we turn that into a gerund, right? But now we're going to use this gerund as either a subject of a sentence or as the object of, a, of the sentence. And that's what we're going to learn. So let's take a look at the, another gerund. So for example, the verb they, I'm sorry, the verb pay, we turn that into a gerund by simply adding ing. And then we have paying improve. And of course, there are some spelling things that you should have learned in previous classes. Uh, and uh, we remove that E, for example, then we add ING, and so we have improvement. Let's go into some details now, and let's talk a little bit about gerunds, and particularly gerunds being used as subject of sentences. So on the screen right now, we can see that a gerund can be the subject of a sentence, and a couple of grammar rules to learn is that it is always going to be singular. It's always going to act as a third person. And so let's look at that. Voting is an important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. And as you can see, those are subjects of sentences. And uh, the idea here is that this is going to be singular. So we're always going to have a singular verb. Like in this case, voting is an important responsibility. We could say voting was or voting will be, but the idea is that it's going to be singular. And then the other example, choosing a candidate takes time. Again, choosing becomes the subject of our sentence, and so becomes a thing, not necessarily um, a verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add S to that verb. When talking about this topic, it's important not to confuse the gerunds with the present progressive. So let me give you an example about that. If I express, I'm voting today, uh, really what I'm saying is that it's an action that is happening today, right? It, it could be in the future, by the way, as well, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, and on the other hand, voting is an important responsibility. So in that particular case, I'm using that as a present progressive form. On the other hand, I'm using that as a gerund. So I'm using that as the object of my sentence. And so there, it's a verb, and the second example, it's, a, it's the subject of a sentence. And so let me just give you a quick example of what I want you to do. So what is exciting for you? Okay. Well, windsurfing is exciting. Windsurfing is very exciting. Playing soccer is exciting. Going to the movies is exciting. So all of those expressions that you've heard in the past, and they don't quite make that much sense. This should make a lot more sense now. And so what I would like for you to do is to take that concept then and tell me what makes you laugh, what gives you a headache, what isn't polite, what is. Okay, we're going to start with this activity. Let's do it as a group before we go to the small group discussion. Okay. Um, Take a screenshot of this, please. We're just going to do it in small group. Take a picture, please, a screenshot, and I'm going to send it to you anyway. So you're going to start with a, with a gerund, all right? For example, mm -hmm. what, makes, what makes you laugh, guys? Tell me something, an activity. It has to be an activity, though, not a noun, right? So that you can use the verb with the ing form. Watching comedy movies. Watching comedy movies. Leila? <laughs> you realize what gives you a headache? Working late. Working. <laughs> <laughs> you guys agreed. Right, working on the late gives me a headache. And being in traffic. Being in traffic. Okay, you can come up with a lot of ideas. So take a screenshot of this, and I'm going to add some more. Okay, take notes. And we're going to finish with that. Let me see. We're going to talk about what makes you happy, right? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? All right. What makes you feel proud of yourself? 
and what makes you no that's it all right we're going to include these three and the ones in the image okay try to use the gerund is that clear ready let's discuss in small groups yes. um let me see if we can practice with different people one second three to four all right accept the invitation please i'll send you the images through whatsapp here we go Accept, accept. We don't have much time. popular in your country what destroys the environment and what uh, can be dangerous all right teacher let me try the first one for me watching comedy movies makes me laugh
breaking like breaking, breaking um uh i don't know how do you say but uh, a jar ah yes some something that um means something to you this is and in my past job um i had to speak constantly when makes me laugh Okay. <laughs> what did you say, Glenda? Looking at the little cat playing makes me laugh. Like wow. Hello Kitty? Yes, but Washington the little cat. cat, but the real cat <laughs> playing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Those are kitties. Uh, so that's a little bit different because we're talking about a, a subject in the action they do so you have seen so no look hold on you're gonna say watching because they're moving all right so watching watching the kitties watching kitties playing you need an apostrophe s actually you need a, a, a possessive because oh. you're okay. using a subject mm -hmm. so watching kitties playing makes me laugh okay so I'm going to write it for you. 